Hi folks, I am Mary Poplin with Boris Effects, and today we're going to talk a little bit about what's new, right? So for those of you that don't know, we're releasing 22.5, Mocha Pro 22.5 tomorrow. And today I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of what's coming out. It's a point release. So it's not really so much major new features as it is a whole lot of life improvements. And I want you guys to know, because I'm going to plug it here so that you know, you know, this is around the NAB time every year, right? And every year at NAB, we do this major sale. So we have a major sale going on. And what that means is that you can get our bundles for like 50% off. You can get subscriptions for 25% off. And I want to make sure that you guys know about that because it's really important. It lasts about a week. Um, so make sure if you are interested that you go ahead and eke in under the wire so that you can get those savings. Now, this is office hours. Office hours is something that we do once a week at about one o'clock um, every Tuesday EST. Okay. And this gives you access to me and other members of our team to talk about our tools. And right now, a lot of it is me and Mocha and After Effects, but we're going to branch out into other pieces of software as we noodle around on projects. Um, what this basically turns out to be is me checking out projects and walking you through what I've been working on recently and allowing you to answer questions and have access. So what I want you to do is I want you to like and subscribe if you find these useful and be sure to answer your questions in the chat because I can see the chat right over here on the left. So some of the things I want to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and show you what's new in Mocha Pro 2022 and some of those things are improvements to the Surface tool. We're going to talk about some improvements to the Lens module. We're going to talk about pre-processing, which is pretty major. And we're going to talk a little bit about things like the miscellaneous things that we added, like custom frame rates, you know, Apple M1 support, VR improvements, et cetera, and things like various bug fixes and a little bit of mouse scrolling. So we're not really going to touch on all those things. I just kind of wanted to mention that they're in there. This is a pretty packed release. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to share my screen. Give me a second to do that. Here we go. All right. Sorry for the delay there. I had to pick the right screen. All right. So let's talk a little bit about pre-processing. So one of the features that a lot of folks have asked for is pre-processing. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you have footage that's got some, you know, gnarly sort of uh, grain or let's, uh, or, or things like low contrast, like in this case, we've got a lot of grain. Um, in this case, we've got a low contrast situation. Um, in this case, we've got a whole bunch of underwater problems. You know, we've got things like um, strobing, et cetera. We have this pre-processing and let's talk a little bit about that. Like, let's say I wanted to track this, but I don't want to deal with all of this grain and all of these various um, problems that exist in the footage. Let's take Mocha Pro and drag and drop it onto my footage. And as usual, we click launch Mocha and the Mocha UI will start and read from my timeline. Okay, it'll take it a second to do because it's processing through After Effects. And once it has loaded into my screen, I can go ahead and make a little shape to track like this. And we can move over to our pre-processing. And if we hit pre-processing, this new window comes up and we can start to change things like the blur. We can change the amount of contrast happening. We can sharpen things up. We can increase the gamma, we can remove flicker, we can preview everything, and we can apply it to all. So in this case, let's go ahead and close that. And now if I start tracking, it's going to track my pre-processed footage and we'll sort of gotten beforehand. Now, Mocha is already a really excellent tracker, but because we are doing this pre-processing, we can track through things that, you know, maybe we had some more trouble with in the past. So once again, that's you click the pre-processing button and you can do things like remove the flickering. You can adjust the blur contrast. You can add some denoise in here. You can add some sharpening and some gamma. All right. Now, this is different than over here in the viewer where you can change the gamma based on what you want to see in the viewer. Okay. And you can also 
toggle off your previews. So look, it's just important to know what you can do with these new tools. This is designed to save you time, and we think that it will. So that's pre-processing. Let's look at it on another piece of footage real quick. Let's close this. And let's talk a little bit about some of the various challenges that you run into with pre-processing. So over here, for example, we've got this sort of sandstorm happening. And if I wanted to track this ground, you know, because we've got a, we've got a little, oh, that's loud. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Um, if I wanted to track this, you know, um, or, or put an object in here, uh, what we'd have to do is we'd have to go ahead and increase the contrast. So if I come over here to Mocha and we drag and drop this onto our timeline, what I can do is I can launch Mocha. And once again, it's going to launch that footage for me. And what I would do here is I would really kind of mess with the gamma and the contrast to adjust this. So we make our new layer for what we want to track. We go ahead into pre-processing and here we're going to hit preview so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to increase the contrast by quite a bit. Um, and let's actually take the gamma down, like way down. All right. So now look how much clearer that image becomes. It's almost like the dust goes away. All right. We can also remove the flicker to do what we can to get rid of that dust problem as it moves to the scene. So when we hit, so now we have something that's a lot easier to track. So if I go ahead and hit track forwards now, we're going to hang on a lot better to that object. So this is pre-processing and it should help quite a lot with the shots that you guys are doing. So that's what's one of the things that's new in Mocha Pro 2022. Now we talked a little bit about the other things that we're going to show and let's talk a little bit about the lens module so i don't know how many of y'all have used a lens module in the past in the past but you know one of the things that we tend to talk about a little bit um, when we're using the lens module is we say you know it's not very often that the production team will have shot you a beautiful grid like this this is really unlikely um, I don't know if you uh, guys have been doing a lot of visual effects for uh, especially smaller budget productions. They don't tend to shoot a grid for the lens like they should. Um, and that leaves us with some really tricky choices when we need to solve for a lens curve that's happening in a shot. So let's say, for example, I want to solve for the lens on this shot. If I want to do a screen insert here, I would really need to solve for the lens. And the reason is, is if you look, do you see the subtle curve that's happening right here on the screen and on the table and on the floor? It's really subtle. And if you're not looking for it, you won't notice. But I tell you what you will notice is when you're trying to composite a screen right here into this screen, then you're really going to notice because you're going to find that your track doesn't line up, especially the closer this gets to the edge. And a lot of users will wonder why that is and they'll get super frustrated. All right, so we've made some adjustments to the lens tool that will make shots like this a little bit easier. So let's show you how to do this a little bit from scratch. I'm going to take Mocha Pro and I'm going to drag and drop it right here onto my timeline. And we're going to go ahead and hit launch Mocha. Now that we're launching Mocha, again, it's going to read from the timeline like it always does. And we're going to go ahead and hit start. Now, if I want to calibrate this, I want to find a good place where I can see a lot of lines that should be straight. Okay, so I'm actually going to pick the beginning of the shot because this should be straight and all of these nice lines should be straight. The edges of the table should be straight. We want to see as many different things that should be straight as possible. So let's tell Mocha to locate the lines. And what Mocha will do is it will locate every line in here that needs to be straight. And this is the old school way that we use the lens tool. And I'll show you real quick what it does. It's going to look through and it's going to draw little lines all over everything and I'll either hit the new line button or in for a new line, and I'll try to follow this by hand. But you can see that this is, excuse me, in for a new line. There we go. But you can see this is kind of a tedious and time consuming process. This is the old school way of doing the lens calibration. Once we were done with that, we would pick what kind of distortion it was. We'd pick several more lines, pick what kind of distortion that was, is either single or double parameter, anamorphic or echo rectangular. And then we would go ahead and hit solve, but I'm gonna show you a different way. So let's not save this. I wanna just totally start from scratch and let's launch Mocha again. And I'm gonna show you how to do this with splines. Now I could have just hit reset, but I like starting over from total scratch. 
um, just because I know for a fact no data was, was saved. Let's go to our lens module and let's say use splines, all right? And so over here on our first part of our screen again, we're saying use splines. So now we'll click this X spline button and here's what's gonna happen. I can now draw a nice open spline right along my line and I can just trace it just like this. And then when I'm done making the line, I'll just hit a left, I'm sorry, right click and that will stop my drawing on my line. And let's just do this real quick. Here we are. And let's make another line right here. And you see what we're doing is we're tracing this. And even though it's a subtle curve, Mocha's going to nail it. So let's just track this here. Well, not track it, but trace it. And I can also correct these. So I don't have to draw it perfect every time. I can correct them to be where they need to be. Like, for instance, if I want to add a curve to this line, I can, right, by relaxing the curves for a curve. Now, the other cool thing about this is it allows me to draw right through problematic lines where there's occlusions okay so that's really helpful too because that allows me a lot more control over where these straight lines are so now if i select all of these right i'm going to go ahead and pick what kind of distortion this is okay so this is going to be uh, one parameter distortion which is going to be a single barrel distortion we two parameter distortion is going to be your fish eye distortion right when it's a double spherical distortion and then we have uh, the option of anamorphic, which is extreme barrel distortion um, and equirectangular, right? So what kind of distortion do we think this is? Well, if I look at it, I can see that it's really subtle and I'll let you put your, what kind of distortion you think it is in the map, I mean, in the, in the uh, blah, 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 chat and uh, I'll give you a second to do that. And then I'll tell you what kind of distortion this is. So this isn't a fisheye distortion, it's not extreme. So it's gonna be a one parameter distortion, right? As opposed to two parameter. And we're gonna hit calibrate. And what will happen is if I turn my grid on here, you will be able to see that we've calibrated for this distortion. So now let's take these and I'm gonna turn them off, turn their gears off, and I'm gonna put them in a little folder and call this lens. Okay, and now we can track this screen just like this. And what that'll do is that'll have this nice curve on it. Now we can also in our lens tab, we can just go ahead and hit render and it will correct my distortion for me. So what we can do with this, let's just close this. I'll show you what I've already done over here is we can now render this back to our timeline. So if I come over here to Mocha, I can go to lens distort or lens undistort okay and you can see that we want lens undistort okay and this is what it looks like before and this is what it looks like after so i can take this lens distorted file and i can load it up and once it's loaded up i can go ahead and hit start and we can now track using all of these tools so if i want to track my screen i've already done this for you i'm not going to make you sit through it if i want to track my screen now you can see that we have this lovely screen that fits exactly where it's supposed to go. All right, so now I can do things like add and insert to this. So we can do this in a couple of ways. What I could do is I could use the insert tool. And I highly recommend if you're working with a lens distorted piece of footage that you use the insert tool instead of trying to do a corner pin and a lens warp on top of it. Now you can, and I'm not gonna tell you that you can't, but it's just a lot easier to deal with the what you see is what you get options that exist inside of the insert module. Okay, so I could just come in here and I could say, hey, just put our logo right here in the middle of the screen. And what you'll see is if I turn my overlays off, that this will render exactly back to where it's supposed to be with that lens curve. And of course, I can adjust how it sits right here using my surface tool, all right? And that's really important because that allows you to come in here and change your detail in a what you see is what you get sort of way, just like this. So we could also just over scan this a little bit too, just like that. Now, 
since we're talking about the surface tool, I do want to show you some cool things that are new inside of the surface tool. Um, so some of the new stuff that's available inside of the surface tool is the ability to adjust the surface. And I'll show you that in just a second, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the lens tool really quick. Because one of the things I want to talk about is that we can now save and import our lens calibration. So we've got our lens calibration here. We've got our track. Everything looks good. I know this is accurate. If I'm in my lens tab and I come over here and I hit, let's just turn the overlays off here for a second. If I hit render, I can see that it will render this um, back flat. I can tell that this is correct. So what I can do is I can go to export lens data. And now we can export it as Mocha XML lens data that we can then save and bring back into other pieces of footage, or I can export a distortion map clip. So for those of you that have used lens modules before, all right, what you're going to need is you're going to need a distortion map, an ST map, okay, in order to get that information out of Mocha and into something like Nuke, something like Fusion, something that reads ST maps, um, also three, various 3D softwares. And this is really nice because sometimes for things like camera solving, you need a distortion map clip. And sometimes you don't have a grid to deal with that camera, um, camera solve. So what we can do is we can use this distortion map clip in multiple applications, either to make things like uh, your camera tracking possible or for things like applying your data back into your shot. So what we do is we choose a location on where we want to save this and we go ahead and save a distortion map clip. What we end up with is let's just show you real quick what that looks like. Let's go to our desktop and Mocha 2022.5 and let's show you here's your distortion map clips. Okay they look just like this and what this is is this is a tri-color map and what it does is it describes the shape of a curve using subtle gradation. Okay, so that's how we get our data into various 3D pieces of software. So, and as I said, we can also just apply this right in the plugin, just like this. So we can do our distortion and undistortion, just like this. All right, so depending on what piece of software you're in, you're going to either want to use an ST map to get your data out, or you're going to want to use the plugin. So for After Effects, I recommend using the plugin and using Lens Undistort. If you need to put something into a screen insert using that data, then again, I would recommend using the, um, the ST map. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you a little bit about the Surface tool. So one of the new things that we have done inside of the uh, Mocha 22.5 version of Mocha is we have added the ability to deal with aspect ratios. Let's find a shot that I want to use here. I want to say, let's give After Effects a second to up. Here we are. Yeah, let's do this one. All right. So let's say I want to add a logo to this object. Okay. One of the, one of the problems that we run into um, when we're dealing with various logos and putting them onto objects is once we've got our track done, let me just go ahead and open this. And it's going to take a second to start. Once we've tracked this, start, let's go to layer one and let's just hide our insert layer really quick. So once we've tracked this, you can see that we have like a really nice track that looks good on this guy's back. Let me just go ahead and hit play. Okay. We want to add a square object to the back of this object. But one of the problems we run into is when we try to do that by hand. Okay. When we do that by hand, there's room for human error and human error is, you know, to err is human, as they say. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our aspect ratios are correct when that we apply them. So what we can do is we can take our little clip here and we can go to an insert clip and we can say, use the insert layer. And what we can do is we can right click here, um, right on our surface tool. And you can see that this new menu pops up. Okay. So this is new. And what we can do is we can set the ratio to the source, the insert, and we can have various quick, um, little ratios that are often used or custom. Okay. So if we, if we switch to the size of the source, obviously it's going to try to switch to the size of the source. If we switch to the side of the insert, it's going to try to do the size of the insert 16 by nine, four by three, two by one or custom. I want this to be 
one by one. Okay, and we're going to hit OK. And now I have a perfectly square insert right here on the back of my object. And of course, I can still continue to try to move it around. But once I start moving it around or adjusting for perspective, for example, you know, we are going to squish it a little bit more, but it will be closer to the actual size. So, and again, we can click on this again, set ratio, custom one by one. Okay, and now it's back to square, but still aligned exactly where it's supposed to be. So, because we're using the insert module, we and because we're using the insert layer, this is completely live. This could be video, this could be motion graphics, it doesn't matter what this is. Um, we can now go ahead and do things like take motion blur, click that on, and hit render. Okay, and or we can just save and close. And right here in our interface, we can go ahead and say, hey, render this as an insert composite right back to my timeline and we end up with this beautiful motion blurred composited shot right back over the top we can even use blending modes and that really helps sell what we're doing so there's a bunch of stuff that we can do though with the new insert tool so we don't just have we're not just limited to things like this okay what we can also do is we can come in here and let's go to our project. And inside of our project, I'm going to go ahead and find a new one. Let's do this one. All right, let's say I want to show how we did this shot here. Obviously, we did a whole bunch of roto for this shot. And we went ahead and inserted this footage behind everything. So let's go ahead and find our clip. And let's find our insert. And let's go ahead and hit Launch Mocha. Okay, so now Mocha is starting. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let this start. There we go. We've added a couple of new features in our right click menu that I want you to notice other than the aspect ratio, which is if we right click this, we can now use the align surface right here in our insert. We can also um, so for those of you that don't know what aligned surface is, aligned surface is where it pushes the insert to the edges of the footage. This is helpful if you've already actually aligned it. So aligned surface, do you see how it's made it the size of the footage? Um, if you want to know more about aligned surface, I really highly recommend a video that I did on the Boris FX website called Aligned Surface and Mismatched Resolutions. It's about how you deal with objects that are already placed in the scene that you need to align and alternatively how to align objects that aren't the same aspect ratio as the original footage okay so let's go ahead and actually reset this as well so we can reset our surface basically based on the splines that are placed in the scene you see i have a spline here spline here and spline here on this layer that i used to track and so it creates a surface tool that's meant to be right inside of that or i can come in here and we can again put this right in the middle and let's shrink our sides just like this and just like this and what we're going to do is we're going to use our let's go ahead and zoom in ah, I'm going to use the four corners to align it and I'm not going to use the aspect ratio even though we can let's just go ahead and make sure that this is aligned where it's supposed to be aligned to just like this perfect all right so i'm actually just using the edges to align this um, because i've already made this square now now that that's aligned let's say i want to do some roto work on this well i've got a problem if i do that especially if i come over here to insert instead of using dark and i use none i can't see anything behind this object okay like that's a problem if i want to do roto so what i can do is i can right click here and i can say hide insert and that's different that's new because what we used to have to do to hide the insert is we had to, let's show insert. We'd have to go over here and select this back to none and then go back over here and select it back to insert layer. And that's not really a huge deal, except for when you're doing it a whole bunch, it gets real annoying. So it's real nice to just say hide insert, show insert while you're working. Okay. Now we also have the hide surface tool. So a lot of times when you're doing roto, the surface tool can get in the way. And you usually have to come and turn it off and on right up here. So these are just basic workflow improvements that allow you to really dig in and have a faster workflow through everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything that we've talked about here 
so which is our aligned surface our new um our new tools um, the new lens module and let's talk about how to do something like this uh totally from scratch so we're going to do a new shot totally from scratch and let's talk about that let's go to our project and see which one i want to do i'm going to do this one totally from scratch all right so here is um a little a little insert I did and I'll show you what the before looks like. Here's the before and here's the after and let's play the before for you. And then we'll play the after. We'll talk a little bit about how we can combine all these tools together uh, to do our work and how and show a little bit about how it speeds up our workflow. So let's let that play. This is our before. And Here's our after. All right. Now this is going to involve a couple of things because what we've got to do is we've got to track this background. Okay. We've got to do a little bit of an object replacement and we've got to do a little bit of compositing on top of everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this and apply Mocha. So let's just go ahead and take our original footage. I'm going to drag this all the way up to the top and we're just going to actually let's make a completely new one. Let's go to our footage here and let's go new comp from selection. Okay. And let's start this completely from scratch. Let's take Mocha Pro, drag and drop it right onto our timeline. And what we'll do is we'll launch Mocha. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff we got to do here to make this composite look right. All right. So let's hit start and let's get started. So one of the things that we really need to do here is we need to account for this hand moving over the object. Now, what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. Um, I don't really need to, tr to track this whole hand. I just need to account for these fingers and thumb. Okay, so let's come in here and let's track these really quick. Well, let's just start from frame one because her hand's not moving so much. Let's see. Let's actually check and see if it's, yeah. Her hand's not moving so much that I need to worry about a bunch of different shapes. But let's come in here and let's track her fingers just like this. And I'm going to track these together just like this. And we'll account for her larger ring edges in a minute. All right, so we're going to take this shape and we're going to soften it using relax curves and we're going to pull tight for corners just like this. And we're going to grab this top part of her hand together. Now we're also going to account for her thumb. So let's come in here and let's draw a shape around her thumb just like this. All right, and just like we always do, you know, we're making two different shapes for two different motion groups. So let's call this thumb and let's call this top hand. We're going to take thumb and drag it under top hand. All right. And we're going to just go ahead and track using translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. We could also track this using like, if we really wanted to, we could track with um, a mesh tracker to try to get this better. And let's see if that takes forever. Let's hit track forwards. Nah, it doesn't. So let's let the mesh tracker do its thing and track through. And what we'll do is we'll then use this data for everything else. Now notice I'm not tracking a whole bunch of shapes at once because if I tracked a whole bunch of shapes at once, I'd have kind of a problem. And I think it's going to do okay even with the mesh tracker um, tracking this hand because it's going to try to follow the subtle motion of the hand as best as possible. Now, using the power mesh tools with rotoscoping is great as long as the object is not doing that thing where it's moving just absolutely all over the place in a rapid way because the power mesh tracker is actually really sensitive and the planar tracker is kind of a is, is a little bit more blunt right what the planar tracker will do is the planar tracker tracker will guide most of the motion and then we have this subplanar tracker um, the power mesh tracker to get all of the subtle motion like her finger bending while the other fingers are bending okay and that's really useful for grabbing that subtle motion but 
It's not always desirable because sometimes that subtle motion can throw your track totally off base. For this, we're going to use it and see what we can get away with. But notice we didn't on the thumb. And that's because it's just not necessary to use it on the thumb. The thumb is moving in a pretty basic way. There's not a lot of subtle motion to it. She's not tapping her forefinger or doing anything like that when we're tracking her thumb. So we're just going to keep that as translation scale rotation and shear. And in general, for most rotoscoping, I do recommend that you don't track perspective. Um, but... If the object is subtle and like the hand, then yeah, you can totally use power mesh and perspective and get away with it. You just really got to look at what you're tracking and then make a judgment call. If you're tracking a ballerina who's doing a whole bunch of pirouettes at once, then maybe, yeah, definitely do not use the power mesh tracker. That would be bad news. All right. Now, I don't know that I'm going to track through this whole scene for you because I don't want to take forever waiting on tracking, but let's let's look, let's get about halfway through and then we'll talk a little bit about tracking the background. And I'll just make this um, I'll make this a little bit more compact. So I see Ross is talking about in the chats. Uh, we also did include um, a middle mouse zoom. So um, in, while we're in Mocha, let's just stop for a second. We can now zoom with the scroll wheel. So this is something users have asked for for forever, and it's really subtle, but it's actually super handy. All right, um, I'm going to trim this to about here because I don't want to make you sit through this forever and ever because there's a lot of stuff we have to do with this. Um, but suffice to say, the track is going to work this way throughout the whole shot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, turn our mesh off so that we're not looking at it. And let's go ahead and make some subtle corrections to this hand just like this. All right, we're going to do a really rough job here. I'm not going to go through. I'm not going to go through and re-roto this whole hand because I've already done that, and I just don't want to. But uh, and also because you've seen what the final looks like, and you know we we're we're just going to talk about processes here. Okay, so let's take this down like this. There we are, and now you can see that the power mesh did a pretty good job of getting that subtle hand motion. All right, let's actually just bump this up and out a little bit. There we are. Yeah, that's nice. All right, and let's go ahead and fix this thumb end a little bit and scroll to the end here. Yeah, that works pretty good. Okay, so we've got our lovely roto shapes. All right, for the hand. Now, let's go ahead and turn the gear off for those and leave them alone. Now, another thing I can do is I can go ahead and take the same thumb shape and let's just duplicate this thumb shape by hitting duplicate. All right, and I'm going to call this shadow. And what we'll do is we will bump this out a little bit. Let's take this thumb, bump it out here, pull this out here, and we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of a shadow on this page because this is one of those fun things where we have to go ahead and account for, let's delete that. There we go. We have to account for a shadow over time. All right. And we want to make sure that we grab that shadow um, so that we can in, in do our own track. And I actually don't like the way that looks. Like, I feel like it's wobbling a little bit. Like, it worked for the thumb, but I don't know if it works for the shadow. Actually, hmm. let's try this. Let's delete that for a second. And let's come in here. Because I don't like the way that looks, I'm going to just go ahead and grab this part of the hand really quick. I'm going to track translation only. I'm going to hit track forwards, and we're going to call this shadow. And let's go ahead and hit track forwards. There we go. If you have something and it doesn't look right because you're duplicating a shape, you can always go ahead and change your mind. So, so I've changed my mind, and that's my prerogative. All right, so once I'm done, I'm going to show you a quick little trick here that I like to do. Um, I'm not going to relink shapes or anything. I'm going to do this the super lazy way. Um, we're going to go ahead and take that shape, and we're going to move this shape right over here. And then I'm going to take the Add to X-Blind tool. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to quickly draw a new shadow just like this. And we're going to pull this up to the end of the finger. I'm going to take my tracking shape and delete it. And now 
I have a better shadow. And you see how that moves a lot better because we're just using translation only. And we can also just correct it over time as well. So we can just pull this in towards the end. And now we've got the nice subtle shadow that we need to put back over this page. So let's go ahead and move that down. So we've got a couple of things that we've done here that are helpful. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to track this paper. Now, luckily, this paper is great because what we can do is we can just come in here and it's got texture all over it already. Now, that is a slight problem as far as compositing goes, but as far as tracking goes, I am very pleased. So let's go ahead and take our surface tool and turn it on. And let's align our surface tool right here. Okay, just like this. And this is going to be one of those things where if I take my sheet and I say, hey, uh, let's do a set ratio and let's do custom. Um, and let's do, let's see, um, eight by 10. Okay, well, and it turns out it was already there. That's nice. Um, so we were actually already there. How handy. Um, I guess I just guessed that really well. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to track this. So let's track this. Let's hit track with perspective, translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. Let's hit track backwards. Just like that. I love it when you eyeball something and it's correct. That's nice. All right, let's jump back and hit track forwards. Here we are. And we're going to end up with this nice little track. And it doesn't even look like I need to do any corrections on it. It just looks like it's pretty accurate. So let's go to, yeah, let's make sure that this is aligned 100% properly, just like that. And if I check it, rock solid. Okay, so now let's call this paper track. And let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's add one more thing, which we're going to add a new shape. Let's call this, let's just come in here and draw a nice outline around my paper, just like this. All right, so I've got this nice outline around my paper. That's very handy, but I want to patch this, okay? Like I don't want to, I don't want to have this, this little image in the middle of my paper. So let's come in here and call this paper patch. Okay, and I'm going to use the add to x spline tool. And I'm just going to draw a nice little inner shape here, just like this. And we're going to align it, let's go ahead and let's hide our surface tool. So I don't have to look at it. And let's align this properly, just like this, about about where I want it to be. All right, so now I've got this little area that I can patch my paper with. So let's go ahead and save Mocha. And I can do a whole bunch of stuff with this now. So we're gonna save Mocha and we're going to close it. All right, but see how fast it was to navigate between all those things and how fast it was to scroll in when I needed to and hide all my tools when I needed to. It's just little improvements, but they are major improvements as far as workflow goes. So the first thing that I need to do is let's go to layer new and let's do a solid here inside of After Effects. And I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna pull a nice even middle color from this paper um, and we're gonna get away with this. Now, uh, let's come into our original layer here and let's duplicate it and let's rename this. Let's call this Roto, okay? Now inside of Roto, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Roto and I'm going to go into my mats and I'm gonna say, hey, create AE masks, please. All right, so now I have a whole bunch of masks for my Roto and I don't know why it's doing that, but let's go, oh, it's because it's here. All right, let's, that's odd. It's a little bit off, isn't it? Hmm. Let's figure out why that is. Shouldn't be off. I wonder what's gonna happen if we, hmm, interesting. I'll figure out why that's going on later. Let's instead use the apply mat. And I'll have to figure out what happened there later. I'm not gonna go ahead and mess around with this. So um, instead let's go to apply mats and let's do visible layers. I'm going to say, I want you to apply 
my paper patch um, right here. So let's say apply. Okay. And let's go ahead and take this and let's cut and let's paste it right here on top of my mat. And let's say um, apply mat visible layers paper patch. Let's go. There we are. Now we want to invert this a little bit. So let's go ahead and go invert. Um, oh, you know what I did? Let's go ahead and launch Mocha. I drew an outer patch and not an inner one. Let's go to start. And let's take our, our shape here. And there's our paper patch. Let's go ahead and delete these outside corners just like this. Yes. And now let's hit save and close. There. And it'll apply my paper. And I'm still trying to figure out why we're offset, but I'll we'll just offset this for now. Um, let's go to our anchor point and move this over. And let's go ahead and blend this edge. So let's increase our feather by quite a bit. All right, so now we've got a patch right here on top of our footage. And what we can do is we can then combine these layers in other ways. So we can come in and we can uh, take our footage and we can add our shadow back in and we can add our roto back in. So let's go to our roto layer here. And I'm going to actually just grab probably my roto layer from my previous footage because I don't know why this is offset and I don't want to mess with it. Let's go over to our original footage here and let's actually just since this is working, I'll just walk you through this project, but I'll, sh but I showed you the original of how we started. I think what I did here and probably uh, what I should have done in the other one is pre um, is uh, either trimmed the footage or pre it or something. I'm not sure why it's off, but we're not going to worry about it right now. Let's go to our, our footage here and let's talk a little bit about what we've done. So one of the things we have done here is we have gone ahead and added motion blur over the top of everything to hide all our sins. But what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little bit about how we've applied our mocha. So if you look right here, this is going to be our, our mocha footage, right? So let's go ahead and let's launch mocha. Here we are. Mocha is starting. Let's hit start. All right. So here is where we're applying our mat for our footage. All right. And we're isolating this mat to right here. And you can see that we can use our insert layer right here in order to apply this. Okay. And what we're doing is we're rendering this, this back in, but we're blending the edges of our object using our mat with a feather of 100%. Okay. So that is really handy. Now, the other thing that we've done in here is we have tracked our shadows and I'm going to show you what this looks like. So we made a little fill and a little mocha track. So let's launch mocha. And I'll show you all the shapes I ended up making for this same shot. All right. So for this, we just did a little finger shadow and we have the wall track right here. So we duplicated our original track, our original mocha layer, and then we added this finger shadow to everything just like this. And what I've done is I've come in here and I've added this effect. So if you come over here and you look that we have this select, pick both, pick edge, pick inner. Okay. I can pick edge. All right. And if I turn my mats on, you can see that what we have here is we have this ability to alter our shadow right here on our footage. So if I hit save, This will apply right back to our shadow here on our timeline. And what we've done is we've just multiplied this over the top with a little multiply. Okay. Now we've also added a larger shadow for the hand and I'll show you what that looks like right here. And so we're using two layers of multiply because oftentimes when you cast shadows, what you'll notice is there will be a soft shadow and a hard shadow. And that's just the principles of, um, of, of basically painting. Okay. And when you're using visual effects and creating visual effects, um, you want to think about the principles of painting, of color design, of uh, hard and soft edges as a concept, right? And, and that's what sells the look for us. So as far as soft edges go, we've got a real soft edge mat right here 
we've got a hard edge mat right here <clears throat> and that helps sell the look okay and so combining everything together we get our original we have our little patch that we put on top of everything okay which is going to be right here and we have our insert over the top of everything and our roto this is our this is our roto back over the top for the finger so once we have everything complete in here what we can do is we can add some motion blur back over the top and here's our render and so even though this looks kind of complex it's a really it's pretty simple as far as the tracking and roto shapes go you can see that i just did a couple of tracks i tracked the paper okay i tracked the hand for roto um, we tracked a little patch in and then we did a replacement back over the top and because i'm using all of these tools together it's a really fast process all right so um i'm seeing some questions in the chat one of the questions is do you need to parent it to the paper track um yes uh, i did need to patch um to i'm sorry i did need to parent the patch to the paper track so i had a paper track and then i did a, a a track for the parent uh, track and that's actually probably what I missed because I was talking over myself uh, you do need to parent the patch to the paper track um, and then uh, another question is uh, are there any improvements to the power mesh or adjust track and the answer is yes there um, well no, I'm sorry the answer is no there are no improvements to the <laughs> do the power mesh track the power mesh is the power mesh um it's just the same power mesh it's always been it works really well we're pretty happy with it what kind of improvements do you want to see with power mesh track uh let us know and we can implement those features and also this is another good time to talk about like we have a beta and it's a it tends to be a rolling beta so if y'all have things you want to see out of mocha definitely enter the beta and and I'm going to just jump back to my original shot here over first our little shot that we did over here to make sure that my uh, roto is working correctly. Uh, let's go back over to our roto scene and let's launch our original footage. And I just kind of want to illustrate something that I think I just dropped the ball on. And that's just kind of how these live things go. Sometimes I am talking and get ahead of myself. Uh, paper patch. Paper patch has a red timeline we don't like red timelines okay because what red timelines do is they mean that nothing is tracked if we take our paper track we go to link to track um a paper patch and link to paper track now it moves with the software and yeah that would explain why it wasn't moving earlier when i was not paying attention to that so yes you always want to parent your new objects that you want to follow a track to the old object and uh, that's a pretty good illustration of how you want to pay attention to those tools but as far as improvements and stuff go, um, we have not made any uh, major new improvements to the Power Mesh Track. However, I do think the Power Mesh Track is a great tool. And I think one of the great ways to use it is to make sure that when you are using it, you are thinking about how the best ways to use it are. So for example, you saw earlier when I was using the Power Mesh Track, I used it on the hand because it was fine to use it on the hand because the hand is not getting super blurry. It's not whipping around. It's not doing a whole bunch of um, random motion and it's not moving a whole lot back and forth in perspective. Now, um, we're getting another question in the comments, which is how can we enter the beta? So you want to go to www.borisfx.com, which I should probably just say is borisfx.com. Go to borisfx.com and under borisfx.com, you should have an option. Let's go ahead and let's just look, let's load Explorer here. And let's talk a little bit about, let's go to borisfx.com let's get away from the awful news and let's go to our support and under support um, you should be able to go to community and under community you will be able to do things like look at our various um, forums and then enter the beta from there and i hear that we have a microphone on from mission control mission control how can i help you hey mary i'm sorry is my microphone on <laughs> is i heavy breathing <laughs> sorry no yeah totally wanted to jump in and say that um so the the mocha beta is a private forum on borisfx.com but definitely if anybody wants to join 
um go over to like mary show the community tab on boris effects jump into the mocha pro public forum and i'm sure you'll see in there if you search there's some um, you know requests in you know looking for beta testers or if you just post in there and say hey i'm interested in joining the beta i'm sure martin will reach out and add you to the private beta so that's probably your best way but definitely check out the boris effect forums they're amazing martin and mary and a lot of the developers are in there answering questions and the best way to get your questions answered about mocha is in the forums that's it i will turn off my mic so you won't hear me <gasps> no, anymore that's okay no it's okay I, I really appreciate you jumping in there um yeah so in general our website is a great place to go as you can see we are having our sale and it's it's a spring sale and you can see that we're doing some mocha tracking right over here but um you know, the, the BorisFX.com website is a great place to go. If you haven't been here before, uh, we have tons of training. We also have the Boris Effects live series, which is extremely useful. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like my little office hours, except for much nicer, much bigger, and much longer. Um, we also have uh, all of our breakdowns of our softwares right over here that you can go through, and we have learning tabs right there as well. You can also... As I, I constantly get this question is like, what are our tech specs? They're right here. They're right here on the page. Okay. And then of course, videos and training, we have that on our website as well. So thank you for joining us on these office hours. Um, if you liked this, please go ahead and like, and subscribe. Um, I'm, uh, I'm seeing that I have one more question I want to answer real quick, which is my main trouble with power mesh is that I stabilize a shot and then unstabilize, and the result is a little bit too different from the original, and ooh, that sounds like something we need to know about. So can you please send us an example of that shot? For those of you that need to get in touch with me, I am Mary P at BorisFX.com. That's M-A-R-Y-P for Poplin at BorisFX.com. And what you can do is you can send me any shots you're having trouble with. You can also send me any questions that you have. If you send me a shot that you're having trouble with and I can show it to other people, I can even feature it inside of one of these office hours going forward. And again, these office hours are every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Please don't forget about our sale and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you have a wonderful day.